your nose and tickle, don't they? <laughs> There's some good ones, girl. Get them. <laughs> oh. Timmy. What, Mom? Out. Both of you, out of the kitchen this minute. What's wrong? Your soap bubbles have invaded my rhubarb sauce. That's what's wrong. You better go, Lassie. You can leave that right there. We were just playing, Mom. Well, you can keep on playing, but play something that won't get in my cooking, please. Come on, Lassie. Soap bubbles in the rhubarb. Suppose if they can't eat it, they can always wash with it. Take good aim now and jump through. Are you ready? Tell me if you're ready. Okay. Good girl, Lassie, you made it. Hi, Timmy. Hi, Boomer. What are you doing? Nothing. What you doing? Nothing. Would you do me a favor? What kind? Just a small one. How small? Well, you know my aunt and uncle who live in Westland. I don't exactly know them. Well, they're my aunt and uncle. And my mother and father and me are going to visit them overnight. So could you do me a favor? What kind of favor? On account they have four cats, could I leave Mike at your house while we're gone? <coughs> Mike would like to stay here, because he and Lassie are friends. Do you think I'd be all right with your folks? Sure. You're a pal, and you'll see. Mike won't be any trouble. Lassie will take care of him, mostly. He'll be Lassie's guest. <laughs> this is Mike's favorite ball. And as long as he has this, he's happy. <laughs> If you were 10 miles away, your nose would tell you when I'm taking cookies out of the oven. They sure look good. Uh, oh, careful. Very, very hot. Here now. You can take these and be sure to give some to Boomer. Oh, Boomer's gone. Oh, I thought I saw Mike playing outside with Lassie. Uh-huh. He's going to be Lassie's guest for the weekend. He's what? He'll be Lassie's guest. Oh, would you stop eating for just a minute and tell me what you're talking about? Well, Boomer's going with his folks to visit his aunt and uncle, and they have four cats. So I decided to let Mike stay here. That is, after Boomer asked me to. Timmy, it's a very great responsibility to take care of someone else's pet. Oh, Mike's no trouble. Boomer told me so. And anyway, Lassie will take care of him. But that's not all. Don't you think you should have asked your father or me before you invited a guest for the weekend? But I told you, he's not my guest, he's Lassie's. It's the same thing. Gosh, I guess I didn't think, Mom. Well, little boys rarely do. Huh? Nothing. Now, you just make sure that you and Lassie take good care of Mike. And next time, I think you'd better ask first. Gee, thanks a lot, Mom. You sure swell.
lost your ball. Well, Lassie will find it for you. Well, what's going on? Timmy, are you all right? He can't sleep without his ball. Here it is. Will you give the ball back to Mike now, please? See, that's all he needed. Well, now that he's got what he wants, I think you better get back into bed and go right back to sleep. Yeah, I hope I can get back to sleep. Let's hope we can all get back to sleep. <laughs> Good night, son. Good night, boy. Good night, dear. Good night. We've got to do something about that ball. I hate to do this to your guests, Lassie, but we all got to get some sleep. against the barn, you two take turns in chasing it and bringing it back to me. You watch Lassie first, Mike, and do exactly like she does. That's fun. See, I'm using your favorite ball. <coughs> this one's gonna be for you, Lassie. <coughs> you can't have it until I hit it. Get ready now. Catch, Lassie. Did you see that, Mike? Now it's your turn. Get this one, Mike. Good boy. Now bring it here. Bring it here, Mike. Mike, we're waiting for you. says he wants to talk to you. I'll be right in. You've seen Lassie do it two more times. Now you try it again, Mike. now and meet you a little bit later at the hardware store. Well, Uncle Petrie stopped in at Al's garage. Al said that he could fix the brakes first thing in the morning if I left the car there overnight. Oh, I'm glad. Driving with brakes that don't hold is just asking for trouble. I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I'll leave the car at the garage and then drive back from Calverton with Uncle Petrie. Now what's happened to both of them? Where 
have you been, Lassie? Where's Mike? <laughs> Need from town? No, thanks. Uncle Petrie has my list. Gonna play anymore, so he can come back now. Yes, dear? Have you seen Lassie? No, I haven't. Or Mike? No. I can't find them. Oh, I'm sure they're both close by. You know, I sent Lassie after Mike, and now they're both gone. Maybe they're out in the barn. I looked. Well, if you sent Lassie after Mike, she'll come back with him. In, Mr. Martin, been waiting for you. Am I late? Nope. Just getting ready to close up for the day. Can I uh, pick the car up around noon tomorrow? Sure. Early if you like. I'll get out at first thing in the morning. Fine. Say, could you drive me over to Rayburn's hardware store? I've got a ride home from there. Sure thing. Just let me lock up.
be someplace. Where are you? Mom? Yes, dear? Did Lester and Mike come back yet? No, dear, I haven't seen them. Oh, they must be around somewhere. Lassie would never be gone this long, especially with Mike here. And where can Mike be? Well, I wish I knew. Dad, Dad, Lassie and Mike are gone. Hold on, son. A burst of information like that is confusing. What's he talking about? Well, it's just as he says. They're both lost. Oh, no, that'll never solve anything, son. You just tell me the facts and we'll act accordingly. Come on. You just sit down here. You tell your dad what it's all about. Well, it all began with Mike. We were playing and Mike didn't come back with the ball. And I sent Lassie after him. And the second time, Lassie didn't come back either. And I called and called and Lassie didn't answer. And then I went looking for her. And she wasn't where she was supposed to be. I looked all over, every place. And how long ago was this? A long time ago. Just after you left for the garage. Oh, God admit, that's not like Lassie. Mike being here and all? Well, I'm sure that wherever Mike is, Lassie is too. She just loves that little fellow. <laughs> Mike was Lassie's guest. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take the pickup truck and scout around. We can cover a lot more ground that way. Uncle Petrie, you better stay here. They might come back while we're gone. And I'll latch on to them so they don't start out looking for you. Well, let's go, boy. Well, I'm coming, too. give up yet, son. Well, I thought perhaps Mike had gone home, but well, they weren't anywhere around the Bates farm. But they must be somewhere. Say, Timmy. We've circled these woods twice. Maybe I'll never see Lassie again. And what will I tell Boomer about Mike? Maybe they're both gone forever. I don't think that, dear. Hold on. At least she's safe, son. Don't ever run away again. I love you. But where's Mike? Mike, where's Mike, Lassie? <laughs> she wants us to go with her. Well, hurry. 
Get in the pickup. We'll follow her. Imagine why they're this far from home. Oh, we're almost at Calverton. Not yet, Sabon. Mike went after it. But I couldn't have hit it this far. Oh, look, Lassie, stop. <laughs> oh, there's a fire in the garage. Don't worry. Dad, Lassie! Hey, Jimmy, you stay with me. Oh, it's all right, girl. It's all right now. There's no danger. It's okay. The fire's out. Oh, Paul, you shouldn't have taken such a chance. Lassie, how'd you know about the fire? Ah, what was she doing around here in the first place? Well, that still doesn't solve the mystery of Mike. I think there's something in there she wants. Maybe it's Mike. Mike must be in there. Oh, I doubt if Mike is in there, son, but whatever it is, we'll take a look around. It's Mike. Oh, and Lassie knew he was in there. He could have suffocated. You're all right now. But how'd you get in there? Well, I can't pretend to know the answers to everything. Well, this time I don't even know the question. You're safe now. Well, I guess I better call Al at home and tell him about the fire. Don't tell me he wants to get back in there. He must want something. So that's where the ball went. And Mike must have jumped in after it. I guess as it turned out, we were all pretty lucky. You know, I remember lighting a cigarette, but I don't remember walking out with it. It must have been that cigarette. No doubt about it. It's a good thing you kept a fire extinguisher handy. Yeah, but if it hadn't been for her, I'd be doing business in a bed of charcoal. Thank you, Lassie. And don't forget Mike. If he hadn't have been in the trunk, Lassie had never found the fire. You're right, young fella. There's two sides to every coin. It was awfully nice of you to take care of Mike. Oh, we were glad to do it, Boomer. He was no trouble. Hardly much. At all. I told you, all he needs is his ball. It keeps him out of all kinds of trouble. Doesn't it, boy? And any time you want to leave Lassie, we'll give her just as good a time as Mike had. <laughs> Lucky. 
Don't be a stubborn donkey. You know you can do it if you want to. I'm going to give you one more chance to show you're not a dummy. Now sit down. <laughs> Proud of you. That took a lot of patience. That was quite an accomplishment, son. I never thought you'd do it. I couldn't teach him anything without Lassie. Anyway, Lucky's real smart when he wants to be. Pete Johnson says this county fair is going to be the biggest one we ever had. And I'm ready for it with my hybrid corn. If I say so myself, I think I'm going to win a prize. Gosh, I wish I was that sure about my preserves. I still don't know whether I should enter or not. Well, what's to stop you? You make the best apple jelly in the world, Mom. And your strawberry jam will go down in history along with the invention of the electric light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't know I had such devoted fans. Well, there's no reason why we all can't be represented at the fair. It's a matter of family pride. I know I'm entering the Whitland competition. <laughs> oh, heavens, I don't want to be a traitor to the family. Win or lose, my jam will be in there fighting. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one that's not going to be part of the fair. Oh, of course you'll be part of it. We're all one family. We'll all share in whatever credit's due. Your mother's right, Timmy. After all, take my hybrid corn, for example. Didn't you help to plant it? And what about my preserves? Who picks my apples and my strawberries? You do, don't you? Yeah. And if I win a prize in that Whitland competition, I got you to thank. I'm using that jackknife you gave me for my birthday. But I wanted to do something of my own. But son, you're still a little young. The children's competition is for 4-H club members. And you're not old enough yet for a junior member. Then what are little boys my age supposed to do? Just eat all day and sleep all night? I wondered why they even bothered to make little boys. isn't home from school yet. Oh? Is that a statement of fact or an ominous forecast? Well, he's always home by this time. I'm worried. Well, sweetheart, all young boys have lingeritis. He might have stopped over at Boomer's house on his way home. Well, do you think I ought to phone and find out? Well, I don't see any harm in... Mom, Dad! All right, go ahead and say it. I will. Because you've got it coming to you. I love you. Mom, Dad! Where were you? Guess what? What? I'm going to be part of the county fair. You are? Well, tell us about it. Is that why you're late getting home from school? I rode in a Calverton. Dad, you knew that dollar you gave me a long time ago, and you said I could do anything with it I wanted to? I used it to enter myself in the horse show. You entered yourself? In the horse show? How did you enter yourself in a horse show? We don't even have a horse. I entered Lucky. <laughs> this is to certify that Timmy Martin has registered his entry named Lucky in the farm horse grooming and obedience competition. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Timmy. I, I, I just couldn't help it for some reason. Now, Timmy, you've entered Lucky in the competition, but it's for horses, not for donkeys. Did the man who gave you the certificate know that Lucky isn't a horse? And uh, never was one. He didn't ask me. He said this was the only contest a boy my age could enter. So, I entered Lucky. Timmy, apparently the man wasn't aware that Lucky isn't a farm horse. He just accepted the fact, dear. He accepted my dollar, too. Uh, son, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I'm afraid you're going to find out the man made a mistake. And when he finds out... Now, don't you see, this contest is definitely for horses. Lucky's just like a horse, only smarter. But that doesn't make him a horse. 
He's got four legs like a horse, a tail. His head is in the same place. Everything. Everything, but he's still different. I bet Lucky doesn't know he isn't a horse. But I'm afraid the judges will know, Timmy. You know something? It says here in the competition rules that this is an open contest. And any breed or type of farm horse can be entered. Lucky's any type. It's all right, girl. It's going to be you, me, and Lucky. What'd you have to bring that point up for? It's still a horse contest, not a donkey contest. Well, what is a donkey? I mean well, it. What is a donkey? Well, a donkey, it, it's a... Uh, well, it... Do you know? Well, of course I do. A donkey is... A donkey is an animal with four legs. Uh, Just as I thought. Neither of you know what a donkey is. You just know what a donkey isn't. I bet the cyclopedia knows. I'll go get it. Now, what does that one say? Is anybody a lucky horse? Come on, we're waiting. Well, it looks as if we've got a technicality if we want to be technical. What does that mean? It means yes for one side and a big no for the other. <laughs> According to the encyclopedia, the donkey, or the burrow, which is smaller, belongs to the equine family. Now, equine is defined as pertaining to or resembling a horse. Now, here, finally, is horse. Now, zoological. In the broad sense, any member of the horse family, which includes donkeys, burrows, zebras, etc. There, that's it. Then Lucky's a horse. Son? According to the encyclopedia, you could also enter Lucky in a zebra contest. Gee, it isn't that Lucky is actually a horse like other horses, but Lucky is a member of the horse family, sort of a cousin to a horse. That means the same thing. Lucky's going to be better than any of his other cousins at the fair, won't he? <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> Did I hear you say donkey? Well, now, it isn't really as bad as it sounds at first, Mr. Tumulty. A donkey in a horse contest? Well, please try to see it from my little boy's point of view. It means the world to him. And technically, a, well, a, a donkey is part of the horse family. It's a relative. My dear Mrs. Martin, every family has a relative they don't brag about. Well, suppose I told you that a zebra is also part of the horse family. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you got a zebra, too. Oh, don't you see, sir? The rules of the farm horse contest were made for all varieties of horses. It's an open contest, and it's mostly for children anyway. Well, there's no doubt the original error was mine. And I certainly don't want to see that nice little youngster of yours hurt in any way. Of course... You know I'll be one of the judges. Now, if your son's entry fails to come up to the competition, well, everything has got to be fair and square. Well, then, you mean it's all right? <laughs> A donkey! <laughs> Now, I want each of you to try a different flavor and tell me the truth. I'm an expert on strawberry jam. Ah, uh, crab apple jelly is my weakness. I want to try the orange marmalade. The truth now, because that's what the judges at the fair will tell. The truth. Truth. Twelve minutes and 18 seconds. That's wonderful. How do you do it? Well, with, with just a little more practice, I can do it even quicker. Gosh, a little man. <laughs> Look at that. The 
the most beautiful ear I ever saw. It's so big. I can't believe it. Sure is pretty, ain't she? A sight for sore eyes. Why, Lucky could win first prize in a beauty contest. Animal. It sure is. You're both thinking what I'm thinking. I wonder if we did the right thing in letting Timmy enter Lucky. Donkey's still a donkey, and there's been a lot of beautiful horse flesh parading in there. Are you both forgetting all the tricks Timmy taught Lucky? Don't forget, this is an obedience contest, too. Looks ain't everything. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Of course I am. The judges have finished marking their points on grooming, and we will now proceed with the obedience contest. I could enjoy this. I don't think anybody can follow that. Oh, dear, and it means so much to him. And now the next contestant is Timothy Martin with his entry named Lucky. Now, this next entry needs a little explaining. Although this contest was intended for farm horses of any and all varieties, we have seen fit 
to extend the rules just a little more and have accepted close relatives. <laughs> supposed to sit down until I tell you, Lucky. We haven't even started yet. Please. Oh, I, I just can't look. It's a fine-looking animal you've got there, and the dog, too. You must be mighty proud. I am, sir. Well, now comes the hard part. Do you think you can carry it off? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the judges have completed marking their points for grooming, and the obedience contest follows. So please, Lucky, just do what Lassie and I taught you. Okay? Don't forget. Sit down. I can't stand this much longer. You did it just a little while ago, Lucky. Please do it now. Why don't you try some other things, young fella? Has he learned any other things? Yes, sir. Lucky can do almost anything. But mostly he likes standing still in one place. Well, I'm afraid we can't give you many points for just standing still, even if he breaks the world's record. I'll try his line down to you. All right, Lucky. Try hard. Lie down. On your side. Pretty stupid of all of us. I'm sorry. Oh, Timmy, you mustn't take it so much to heart. The important thing is that you tried, son. We're proud of you. Winning the prize isn't the important part. It's entering the competition just as you did. That's right, Timmy. Everybody can't win. Here, look at me. They just didn't give any prize for a carved finger. Had to be wood. <laughs> Everybody was laughing. Oh, but they weren't laughing at you. Their faces were pointing at me when they were doing it. Well, sometimes people laugh without realizing they're hurting someone's feelings. It wasn't meant to hurt you, son. No. 
They were rolling in the aisles when I whittled my finger instead of that hunk of wood. And it didn't even give me a chuckle. It just didn't seem funny to me. Look, he didn't even care. I just wanted to show everybody what he could do. I think perhaps we'd better go home. I think it'd be best. Somebody, please help me. There's a fire. My prize pigeons, they'll die. Where? In the tool shed. I locked them in there to keep them safe. Get in there, little girl. Not even any water around here to put the fire out. <laughs> Also, in behalf of the citizens of Calverton, I proudly award you with the second Hero Blue Ribbon. <laughs> Other kids pay a nickel to watch Lassie do some of her tricks. No, Lassie's no show off.
to show off. What you doing now? Lassie. Lassie, what are you doing? Time of year. Lassie's never acted like this before. It must be something worse. Let's find out. I'll start up here, and you start down there. And we'll meet in the middle. Not so fast. You'll miss it. I found something. I knew Lassie wasn't showing off. She was in trouble. It's a ladybug. Ladybugs are lucky bugs. Maybe we're going to be lucky. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. Your house is on fire and your children are gone. All except one. Can't wish out loud if we want our wish to come true. And we gotta make a wish before it flies away if we want to be lucky. Wonder why it doesn't fly away. Hey, maybe it's dead. No, it's not dead. It's moving. There's a bunch here. I bet Lassie will be glad I'm getting them off. Three, four, five, six. Gee, there's about 12 here. Eight, nine, ten. What are you doing that for? Soon nobody will step on them. We're both wishing the same thing. Well, if you're wishing we're going to be partners, uh-oh. Any help, Ruth? No, thanks. I'll be through in a jiffy. Good. Well, it sure looks like somebody needs some help. I'm all mixed up. I knew the adding ones, but I can't get this takeaway one. Will you help me, Uncle Petrie? Well, now, uh, if you was to ask me how to trap a wild bear, I could tell you, but, uh, Maybe you better ask your ma. She's the one that does the figuring around here. All right. Which is the one that's giving you trouble? Well, now, let me see. I just might learn something myself. <laughs> uh, uh... Say anything in there about how to get rid of those aphid pests on our apple trees? The usual suggestions. John Garrett says we're in for a real siege. Worst this county's seen in 50 years. And what's he doing about it? And he won't say. When it comes to giving out useful information, <laughs> John's close as a clam. Well, I know what I'm going to do to save our apple trees. There, now. That wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> I know how to do it now. Gee, you're smart, Mom. <laughs> well, thank you. 
Being a scientific farmer, I reckon you'll hire one of those newfangled crop dusting contraptions, huh? Uh, you reckon wrong. They're too expensive. I'm using ladybugs. Well, I'll be gall darn. You know something? Ladybugs is what I would have used. <laughs> Gee, Dad, how can ladybugs save your apple trees? By eating up the aphids that are eating up the apple trees. Ladybugs live on aphids. They'd rather eat aphids than, uh, than ice cream and cake. They would? Save your crops nature's way. Use ladybug pest control on aphids. Write today for your order, $10 a gallon prepaid, Bill Newton, Constant, California. You mean people sell ladybugs? They certainly do. Make a mighty good living at it, too. Ten dollars a gallon for a bunch of little old ladybugs? Hear that, Lassie? Well, considering how many ladybugs there are to a gallon. How many? Let me see. Uh, 7,500 to a quart. Shouldn't Timmy figure that out, counting it as part of his homework? We haven't come to quarts and gallons yet. Well, uh, since you're the mathematician of the family, Ruth, how many? Well, um, well there are four quarts in a gallon, and uh, four times 7,500 is uh, 30,000. And that should be more than enough to protect our apple orchard. 30,000? How many ladybugs would it take to save one apple tree, Dad? Well, if they're all lady ladybugs, which are larger than gentleman ladybugs, and they all lay eggs, and the eggs all hatch, about a dozen, I'd say. Yes, with all those babies, 12 would do it. Well, don't count your ladybugs before they're hatched. It's Timmy's bedtime. Come on, off to bed with you now. Good night. You too, Lassie. Night, Dad. Night, Uncle Petrie. Good night, boy. Good night, dear. Good night, son. Night, everybody. Thirty thousand ladybugs in a gallon. Gee whiz. Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie, and Lassie, and all the ladybugs, and keep them safe so they can save Dad's apple trees. Amen. Suppose they'd wake up like all the other animals? What's the matter, Lassie? They can't hurt you as long as they're on the bench. big to me. Can you tell if they're lady, ladybugs? Dad says they're the biggest. Take a look, Lassie. What's she doing up so early? What's he doing up so early? Ooh. 
Ladybugs? Where'd you find them? Well, I didn't exactly. Lassie sort of picked them up. That boomer and I could find more in the woods. And if we found a gallon of them, you could pay us ten dollars instead of sending it to those folks in California. We want to go into the business. Breakfast is ready, and school won't keep. What's the mysterious confab about? Timmy wants to go into the ladybug business. Oh, well, that's quite an undertaking. You betcha. You got to know when and where and how. That is, unless you can find them while they're still hibernating. Hiber... What's hibernating? Oh, hibernating means sleeping through the winter, like bears do. Only difference is ladybugs sleep together. Thousands of them in one spot. That's what these ladybugs are doing. That's why they were so quiet and didn't fly away, isn't it? Well, I understand it takes several weeks of warm weather to thaw them out and make them active enough to fly again. Isn't that so, Paul? Boomer and I better get started right after school. Well, it wouldn't harm none to let them try, Paul. It's been a cool spring, and there's bound to be thousands of ladybugs still hibernating under rocks and leaves and hollow tree stumps hereabouts. Well, who'll uh, clean them off the leaves? Takes a lot of patience, Timmy. Well, I'm willing to volunteer. Please, please let us, Dad. You never give up, do you? All right, since you're so determined. Good, well, now that's settled. Would you three gentlemen please do me the honor of joining me at breakfast? And even businessmen don't go to school in their bathrobes. I'll get just real fast, Mom. I've got to set a deadline, though. You've got to deliver the goods by Monday, otherwise I've got to send my order to those folks in California. No, you won't, Dad. <laughs> I wish it was afternoon already, so Boomer and I could start our business. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Timmy. Bye, boy. Bye. Well, work to be done. More coffee? Mm -hmm. You don't really expect him to come back with 30,000 ladybugs now, do you? Confidentially, whether they find the ladybugs or not doesn't matter. What's gratifying is Timmy's reason for wanting to do it. Well, that's what puzzles me. Why is he so anxious? Because he's beginning to grow up. He wants to go into business for himself. What do you think of your independent son? Well, I'm very proud of him. <laughs> Ouch! That hurts! Why does it have to be so tight? Well, so they won't tickle you to pieces when you start scooping them into these bags. How will we know when we have a gallon? Oh, no need to worry about that. If you find them, just keep on scooping and your fortune's made. We almost forgot to tie up Lassie. Oh, dogs don't like to be bound up, do they, Lassie? <laughs> well, there you are. Good luck and good hunting. It's up to you, Lassie, to help us start our business. <laughs> <laughs> around here, because Uncle Petrie said they sleep under rocks and stumps. And there are no rocks or stumps around here. Dad's North Field. We just came from here. 
thought you said Lassie's the best tracking dog in the world. She is. Then why is she tracking in circles? I don't know. Looks like she doesn't want to find the ladybugs for us. Oh. Well, if Lassie doesn't want to find those ladybugs, she must have a good reason. But I still think she's the smartest dog in the world. You're right, she is. Lassie went in that direction, didn't she? Well, then, since people should be smarter than dogs, and we're people, why shouldn't we go back where we started? You mean, since Lassie's so smart, she was leading us away from the ladybugs? Sure she was. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> So, didn't I? tree stump where they got the ladybugs was on my side of the property line. No, no, no. No sense getting all riled up, Neville Garrett. You're telling me did the fence zig or did it zag or who should have mended it? Being strictly a backwoodsman, I never did get the straight of thine or mine or who's right away. So I'm just going to keep on cleaning these pretty little bugs for who's ever orchard. So Paul tells me where to put them. I'm telling you. Those bugs belong in my orchard. You thought you could get away with it just because that stump where I put them stands in property that we're disputing. Now, look here, John. What's this all about? Now, let's start from the beginning. Well, whether you did or whether you didn't, it's the same difference. Would I have spent all that money shipping ladybugs from California just so I could start next year's breeding badge for you? No, I don't think you would. You thought you'd get away with it. Just because that stump where I put them stands on property, we're disputing. Gosh, Lassie, I didn't know that was Mr. Garrett's field. I can't let Dad take the blame for something I did, can I? If Dad gives back those ladybugs, Dad's apple trees won't be saved. You really want to help, don't you? Even if I didn't know they belonged to Mr. Garrett, we still have to replace those ladybugs, don't we, Lassie? You're not going to back out on me again, are you? This is your last chance. Are you coming with me, or do I have to go alone? Threatening you like that, going off in a huff. Stubborn, ornery old fool. Yeah, but the joke's on him. John doesn't know that ladybugs like to try out their wings first before settling down to eat. So, if 
He'd put them in his apple trees tomorrow, as he said he was going to do. Most of them would have flown away. Maybe to our orchard, maybe elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Timmy did him a favor by bringing the ladybugs over here. Only John didn't give me a chance to tell him. I better check the irrigation. Where's Timmy? I don't know. The lassie came through here a few minutes ago. Uh, probably on some secret service mission Timmy's got cooked up. These apple trees are saved. And so, when I took all those ladybugs to John Garrett, and he saw he had more than he'd bought in the beginning. <laughs> What'd he say? He said next year he's gonna buy all his ladybugs from Timmy. <laughs> We're not in the ladybug business anymore. <laughs> 